encaminhamento do estabelecimento. Let me just uh, put down this frame. Just a second. Let us know when you are ready, Arvind. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. So, welcome everyone for today's talk. Today we have Arvind Kumar from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. He's doing his postdoc from there. And he'll be talking on regularity of binomial edge ideal. So, if you want to access the slide, you can go to homepage and download it from there. They are already available there. I'll try to put it in chat as well. Yeah, it's already there in the chat. So, it has kept it there. So, if you want to see it, you can download it from there and see. Uh, over to you, Arvind. Well, thanks, Anurag. So first of all, uh, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizing committee for uh, organizing such a wonderful webinar series and uh, for giving me opportunity to talk about my work here. OK, so I will be talking about regularity of binomial edge ideals. Okay. So let's begin with the introduction. Consider a two cross and generic matrix X. So X, uh, the first row consists of variable X1 up to Xn, and the second row consisting of variable Y1 up to Yn. And uh, now, so now what we, we want to study the ideals generated by arbitrary set of two minors of this matrix X. And these, these ideals are called, like ideals generated by arbitrary two sets of minors of this matrix X are called binomial edge ideals. So we'll see why these are called these ideals are called binomial edge ideals. So there is a nice interpretation between ideals and by two um, sets of uh, two minors of matrix X and uh, simple graph on n vertices. So basically, if we consider I to be an ideal generated by uh, two minors of this matrix X, suppose. Uh, then, then we can define a graph on n vertices in uh, in the following way. We can consider edge set of G to be uh, I J will be the edge of G if and only if I J this uh, the two minor I J sorry two minor I J belongs to the ideal I and then the vice versa. So in this way, these uh, uh, these ideals have a nice connection with the finer simple graphs. And okay, so for example, if we consider I to be an ideal generated by two minors of two cross five matrix X, then the associated uh, graph to the ideal I is the graph P5, path on five vertices. And uh, if we consider the this the following graph C5 cycle on five vertices with labeling uh, with the following labeling, then we can see that uh, corresponding to this as we have a unique binomial x1 y2 minus x2 y1. So in this way, this ideal is generated by five binom binomials, where each binomial corresponds to one edge in this graph. So these uh, these ideals was introduced by uh, Herzog et al. and uh, Othani in in 2010. And so let's formally define these ideals. Let G be a simple graph. So simple graph we mean there are no loops and no multiple edges on on the vertex set one up to n, and with that set is then. Set S to be polynomial ring in two n variable. So the binomial binomial edge ideal of G is denoted by JG and it is defined as x y y j minus x j y i. Basically, this is the two minor corresponding to the edge i j. Okay. So the main theme of this talk is 
to to relate the homological invariants of binomial edge ideals corresponding to the combinatorial invariants of graphs so one of uh, important homological invariant of gradient module is castro mumford regularity so we will be studying this castro mumford we will be relating in castro mumford regularity of uh, binomial edge ideal in terms of uh, combinatorial invariance of graphs okay so let's uh, fix some setup and notation which will be used in this talk so k is a field and r is a standard graded polynomial ring in an variable so by standard graded we, grading we mean that uh, this r can be uh, as direct sum of uh, ri and where ri is a k vector space spanned by monomials of degree i that m and n be graded r modules and then and if uh, we have a r module homomorphism from m to n then we say that phi is graded homomorphism of degree d if image of mi is containing uh, ni plus t for each i and m is the unique maximal homogeneous ideal of r so given a finite graded r module m so we can define graded free resolution of m in the following way so consider a complex consider this complex and this complex is called the graded free resolution if image of phi not is m and for each i bigger than 0 uh, fi is graded free module phi i is graded homomorphism of degree 0 and image of phi i plus 1 is kernel of phi i for each i so so once we have a, a graded free resolution then we can talk about the minimality of that so f is said to be minimal if for each i image of phi i is containing m times fi minus in other words the entries of the matrix phi i are are contained in m okay so for uh, i and j bigger than 0 the ijth graded body number of m is uh, basically dimension of the jth homogeneous component of ith tor and uh, so this is very useful invariant so in case when f is minimal for resolution then this each fi can be written as direct sum of uh, beta i j uh, the i these many copies of uh, r minus j so here r minus j is basically uh, graded free yes arvind there is a question in the chat box what is yeah. m so m is finite graded r module So, so yeah. What is small m? You have uh, capital M. Okay, so small m is the maximum homogeneous ideal. Okay. So, of so it is generated by x one up to x n. Yeah. So it's the maximum homogeneous ideal of uh, R. Yeah, yeah, of R. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, R minus J is a graded R module of uh, rank one. Graded free R module of rank one generated in degree J. Okay. So these uh, Betty numbers are uh, the graded Betty numbers are uh, important uh, important invariants and these numbers can be stored in a table and the table is called actually Betty table of that graded module. So in the i th column and j th row of this uh, Betty diagram, we store the Betty number beta i i plus j. So regularity, custom mum for regularity. So we'll be calling uh, regularity. So regularity of M is the maximum over J minus I, when, where maximum is top, taken over this uh, non-zero grid Betty numbers. And projective dimension is maximum over I, and maximum is taken over uh, non-zero grid Betty numbers. So from the Betty diagram also, like one can determine the regularity and projective dimension. So regularity is basically the last non-zero 
uh, row and uh, project dimension is uh, last non zero column in this body table for example r uh, let r be the polynomial uh, standard grid polynomial in two variable and m is quotient of uh, this ideal x1 square and x2 cube ideal unit by x1 square x2 cube then the graded free, minimal free resolution of m is uh, as follows and so from this uh, so this is uh, the matrix v1 and this is matrix v2 so from this uh, minimal free resolution we can see that the 0 0 grid body number is 1 and then beta 1 2 is 1 beta 1 3 is also 1 and beta 2 5 is 1. and the regularity is like maximum or oh, so we, we can see that this 5 minus 2 is 3 and this is the maximum possible so regularity of m is 3 and first dimension is 2 because this uh, the last uh, yeah, for uh, maximum I, uh, I is actually two. So in this case, okay. So a non-zero grid Betty number, beta IG, it's said to be extimal Betty number. If uh, for every, but every pair ST, which is not equal to IG, with S bigger than equal to I and T bigger than equal to J, the STth grid Betty number is zero. So for example, if i is an ideal, in i is this ideal, then the body diagram of uh, R mode i is the following, and we can see that this body number. So this position is basically beta five six, and this is extimal body number because if we choose S and T such that S is bigger than one and T is bigger than six, then everything below this and on the right hand side of this is zero so this is external right number so now we'll call, we will call regularity lemma and this lemma will be like used uh, several times in this talk so let m and and m and and p be finitely generated graded r modules and if we have a sort of the sequence m so if we have the following this sort of sequence with f and g to be graded homomorphism of degree zero then regularity of m is less than equal to regu maximum of regularity of n regular and regularity of p plus one and so the standard reference for this uh, one is a uh, book by irina piva and this uh, this uh, this regularity lemma can be obtained by taking long exit sequence of tor corresponding to this sort of sequence Okay. So let's uh, recall what is known about the regularity of binomial edge ideal. Saidi Madani and Kiani they characterize graphs whose binomial edge ideal has linear resolution. So by linear resolution here we mean uh, regularity of JG is two. So. And so because these ideal is are basically generated in degree two. And Matsuda and Murai, they, they gave uh, general bounds for the regularity of binomial edge ideal. They proved that regularity of JZ is bounded of YN and bounded below Y, length of longest in this path plus one. And they conjecture that regularity of JZ is, the upper bound is achieved if and only if G is a path graph. And Jaffer and Jahid, they, they found the regularity of uh, binomial edge of cycles. And Peter and Peter Sanger and Jaffer, uh, they, they obtained the regularity of uh, complete uh, binomial edge of complete uh, bipartite graphs. And Annie and Jerozon Ger obtained uh, the regularity of uh, of closed graphs. So they in in the in, in all these three cases, the regularity is actually length of longest plus one. And Kiani and Madani they they proved the Masud and Murai conjecture. That is the regularity of J is n if and only G is path graph. 
I think there are some more questions in the chat box if you can access. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, I don't know how to. So, uh, okay. So the first question is the uh, silver Maybe you can you can ask directly. What is the characterization of bracket linear resolution? Okay. So uh, G J G has linear resolution if and only if G is a complete graph. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what Raji was trying to say. G oh, okay. Is only um, yeah. Okay. And okay. Then, okay. So. So this, uh, so we'll be giving an alternate proof of uh, this uh, combinatorial proof of uh, this theorem, which is uh, also known as maxwell murray conjecture. Okay. So for that, we'll recall some properties of graphs. For a subset of vertex set of G, that G A denotes the induced subgraph of G on the vertex set A, and a subset U of vertex set is said to be click if the induced subgraph on U is a complete graph. A vertex is said to be free vertex if uh, it belongs to exactly one maximal peak. And otherwise it, it is called an internal vertex. For example, in this graph, we can see that this vertex B is a free vertex while the vertex A is an internal vertex. And also this uh, the induced subgraph on the word, this is ABC is a triangle which is a complete graph. So ABC, this is a click, even this is a maximal click because this cannot be containing uh, bigger uh, complete graph. Okay. So for a vertex V, belongs to so this this v is actually vertex of uh, graph g so we define a new graph gv and this this is graph on the same vertices vertex vg and uh, with that set egv which is equal to edge set of g union uw uw will be an edge if and only if u w and w are in neighbors of u for example if g is this following graph then, uh, and if we choose V equal to V3, this vertex, then uh, the neighbors of V3 are U2, U3, and U4. So GV will be this. So we have uh, we have created new edges, U2, U3, and U2, U4, and U3, U4 in this graph. Okay. So given a graph G on vertex at M, if V is an internal vertex of G, then IVG will be strictly greater than IVGV. And so IVG is basically number of internal vertices in G. Uh, so the number of internal vertices in G is bigger than number of internal vertices in GV. And also the number of internal vertices in G is bigger than number of internal vertices in G without V. So the proof is as follows. So this is just a uh, it is easy to observe that if W is a free vertex of G, then W is also a free vertex of GV. And now as V is internal vertex of G, and so V become now V become free vertex in GV. So that means that number of internal vertex of G is at least number of internal vertex of GV plus one. That means this we obtain mm -hmm. IVG is strictly bigger than IVGV. Let now we'll prove this this one that IVG is strictly bigger than IVG without V. Let U be a free vertex of G. In G minus V, U is either a free vertex or an isolated vertex. That is like U is not a an internal vertex of G without V. Therefore, IVG is strictly greater than IVG minus V. So this lemma is actually very useful, and we'll be using this in, a, in to prove this result. So Matsuda and Murai conjecture that if G is connected graph on N vertices, and if G is not a path, then regularity of JG is less than equal to minus. So. Okay. 
So this was proved by Kiani and Sara Saidi Madan, and the paper appeared in JCTA. And now we'll give a comminutal proof of this uh, theorem, and which is also like uh, this is also this proof is also short short proof. So okay, the proof is as follows. So by result of M Mothani. If V is an internal vertex of G, then J G can be written as intersection of the binomial edge ideal of G V and uh, X V Y V plus the binomial edge ideal of G without V. So since J G can be written as intersection of these two ideal, we have this sort of sequence of ideals. So J G and this. So we'll be using regularity lemma in this sort of sequence. So we want to prove that so since g is not path we want to prove that regularity of jg is less than equal to n minus 1 so we'll be basically proving that regularity of this middle ID, this middle module is uh, bounded over n minus 1 and the regularity of the last uh, this uh, module is bounded over by n minus 2 okay we prove this by induction on uh, number of internal vertex so the base case is when ivg is 0 in that case g is a complete graph and for complete graph uh, regularity of jg is 2 and since n is bigger than equal to 3 so this is bounded by n minus 1 assume that ivg is positive so we can choose an internal vertex so let v be an internal vertex of g so this is an easy observation that gv is not a path graph and it is connected graph on and vertices because g is connected so by induction because uh, of previous lemma we can use induction so regularity of jgv is less than equal to n minus 1 okay so note that g minus v is a graph on n minus 1 vertices so if g minus v is a trivial graph by trivial graph we mean there are no edges in that case regularity of uh, this ideal is 1 which is bounded over by n minus 1 if g minus v is path graph on n minus 1 vertices in that case regularity of uh, so the binomial edge ideal of path graph is is complete intersection ideal and in that case regularity is known and which is equal to n minus 1 so in general if we have a uh, complete intersection homogeneous ideal then regularity formula is known okay so assume that g minus v is not path graph on n minus 1 vertices and also it is non trivial graph in that case let h1 up to hp be non trivial components of g minus v so this p is uh, p is at least one so by induction so because hi is induced subgraph of g without v so the number of internal vertices vertices of hi is less than equal to number of internal vertices of g minus v which is strictly less than number of internal vertices of g so we can use induction so there are two possibilities this hi can be a path graph or it is not a path graph so if it is a path graph in that case we know uh, it is a uh, the binomial edge ideal of hi will be complete intersection ideal and we know regularity will be equal to v hi otherwise by induction regularity will be bounded over by the number of vertices of hi minus 1 so that's why we have written regularity of jhi is less than equal to number of vertices of hi so therefore regularity of uh, this ideal is equal to since the each hi is in disjoint set of vertices so this we can this is general formula that we can take summation regularity of jhi minus p minus 1 so this p is at least 1 and we can see that this summation summation of uh, the vertices of hi number of vertices of hi is at uh, at most n minus 1 so that's why this regularity is bounded over n minus 1 okay so now note that since gv is connected and v is free vertex so g v without v is a connected graph on n minus 1 vertices so now we we have to prove that it is not a path graph 
to to then only we can use the induction so if possible assume that g without gv without v is a path graph on n minus 1 vertices so that means that uh, the maximal clicks of gv which contains v is a, uh, is a, a triangle and every other maximal clicks of gv are k2 so in that case since v is an internal vertex of g so we will get that g is a path graph which is a contradiction so that means gv without v is not a path graph so we can use induction because the number of internal vertex of gv without v is actually equal to number of internal vertices of gv so by induction this regularity is bounded over n minus 2 so here one can note that the number of vertices n minus 1 so that's why we are getting this So now we use regularity lemma. So by regularity lemma, regularity of G G is bounded of y n minus one. Okay. This completes this uh, proof of Matsudan Murai conjecture. Also, this uh, this is also an alternate proof of Matsudan Murai upper bound. So uh, yeah, so. Okay. So now we'll be studying uh, that Saidi Madani conjecture for chordal graphs. So for that, let's recall some properties of simplicial complexes. Let delta be a simplicial complex. A facet of delta is called a leaf. If f is the only facet, or else there exists a fac facet uh, G of delta which intersects. f maximal so the simplicial complex delta is called a quasi forest if we can order the facets of delta uh, as f1 up to fr such that for each i bigger than equal to 1 the facet fi is the leaf of the simplicial complex with facet f1 up to fi minus 1 okay so let delta of g denotes the collection of clicks of clicks of g so this delta g for me simplicial complex and it is called the click complex of g so by result of dirac g is a chordal graph if and only if delta g is a quasi forest so we'll be using this uh, this theorem so saidi madani and Yani they conjectured that regularity of J G is bounded over Y C G plus one. So here C G is the number of maximum clicks of G. And they proved in the same paper they proved this conjecture for closed graphs. Okay. After that, uh, Anne and Jarajano proved this conjecture for block graphs. And uh, Jantan myself proved this conjecture. For fan of complete graph so in all these cases g is basically this or like closed graph block graph and fan of complete graph all are subclasses of uh, the chordal graphs uh, arvin uh, yeah there is a question in the chat box can you give an example of quasi forest quasi forest okay so basically take uh, a just a facet that is trivial example and then uh, otherwise take two facets F1 and F2, and which uh, which may be disjoint or uh, which which may have some intersection. In both cases, that will form a quasi uh, forest. Or in general, uh, okay, we'll take a chordal graph and uh, like take tree. So in tree, the maximal clicks are basically edges. So now uh, take the simplicial complex with the uh, Take G as a simplicial complex. So in that case, that will be a quasi forest. Okay. Okay. So, so in all these three cases, uh, these uh, graphs are actually uh, subclasses of uh, chordal graphs. so we'll prove this for uh, chordal graphs let g be a chordal graph 
then regularity of this is bounded of y cg plus 1 okay so so in case of if v is internal vertex we will be considering this sort of a sequence and then we will be using regularity lemma okay so we prove this for uh, when g is connected if g is not connected then we will have some component g1 of 2 gk and in that case uh, regularity of jg will be uh, sum of regularity of uh, g1 up to gk minus k minus 1 so in that case the proof will follows once we prove it for connected graphs we will be proving this by induction on number of internal vertices of g okay so these are two technical lemma which we'll be using so if g is codal then g minus v is actually induced subgraph of g so induced subgraph of a codal graph are codal so g minus v is a codal graph and uh, number of clicks of uh, maximal clicks of g minus v is less than equal to number of maximal clicks of g okay let g be a codal graph if v is an internal vertex of g then the new graph gv is also a codal graph and in that case the number of maximal clicks of gv is strictly less than number of maximal clicks of g so we'll prove this lemma okay so let delta g be the click complex of g so by theorem of dirac delta g is a quasi forest okay let f1 up to fs be a leaf order of the on the faces of delta g okay choose k and i such that v belongs to fk and fi and uh, v does not belongs to fj if j does not belongs to this interval so k is minimal and i is maximal such that v belongs to fk and fi okay let uh, f t not of 2 f t q be the facets of delta g such that k equal to t not and t q equal to i and these all facets contain v now set f equal to union of all these facets then we proved that like the facets of delta g v are f1 of 2 f k minus 1 then f then the other facets inside uh, the interval k i and f i plus 1 of 2 f s and this form a leaf order on the facets of delta g v therefore g v is a codal graph by theorem of dirac and also note that this q is bigger than equal to 1 so the number of maximal click cgv is strictly less than c okay now we'll proceed to prove the theorem if ivg is 0 then g is a complete graph uh, okay and in we know complete graph has linear resolution therefore regularity of gg is 2 which is actually cg plus 1 assume that ivg is positive so we have a internal vertex v let v to be that internal vertex internal vertex then we can see that g so by that previous lemma g v is a connected codal graph and ivg v is strictly less than ivg so therefore by induction regularity of j g v by normal energy of g v is bounded over by number of maximal clicks of g v plus 1 g minus v is also a codal graph and the number of internal vertices of g without v is strictly less than number of internal vertices of g so we have two cases if g without v is connected in that case the by induction regularity is bounded of y c uh, the maximal number of clicks of g without v plus 1 otherwise let h1 of hp be non trivial connected components of g without v so in each case by induction regularity of uh, binomial edge of hi will be bounded over y chi plus 1 so therefore the regularity of uh, the, this ideal is equal to regularity of sum of jhi i belongs to p minus p minus 1 and uh, this we can see that this sum is basically see the number of maximal clicks of g minus v plus 1 So in both case, the uh, regularity of this ideal is bounded by number of maximal clicks of G without V plus one. This graph G V without V is an induced subgraph of G V. So this is again a codal graph. 
and the number of internal vertices of g without v is less than or equal to number of internal vertices of gv so we can use induction so by induction number of maximum click uh, the regularity of uh, this ideal is bounded over by number of maximum clicks of gv without v plus 1 okay now we have uh, by the previous lemma number of maximum clicks of gv without v is less than or equal to number of maximum clicks of gv which is strictly less than c hence by using regularity lemma and uh, this inequalities we get regularity of gg is bounded by cg plus 1 so uh, okay so now let's come to the another conjecture about regularity of binomial ideal that is cb much of the conjecture and uh, it states that regularity of gg is bounded over degree of h polynomial plus 1 so and they proved this conjecture for cycles complete multiparted graphs and t star like graphs okay. so we so in all these so we observed that in all these cases these uh, like cycles complete multiparted graphs and t star like graphs as more gg admits unique extremal petty number so we extended uh, this result in for general situation when as more gg admits unique extremal petty number then regularity of gg is bounded over degree of h polynomial plus 1 so this h polynomial is actually uh, i think this has been earlier defined in earlier talks so this is basically uh, one con consider the hilbert series of uh, the graded module as more gg and then the numerator of uh, that hilbert series is called h polynomial of small gg so the numerator uh, one has to consider the minimal like after cancelling uh, the terms with the denominator denominator arvin arvin yeah arvin yes yes Uh, is there any conjecture is there for monomial ideal uh, regularity of uh, any monomial ideal is bounded by degree of h polynomial no no no, no. Uh, that that is not possible actually uh, there is a paper by hebe and matsuda so in that case, in that uh, paper they have uh, constructed a graph with regularity r and degree of h polynomial s so in that case uh, the like r can be like s can be strictly less than r also yeah oh okay yeah okay thanks so then uh, we try to extend this result in case of like if s more than g admits two extremal petty number or more than two extremal petty number so in that case we found this graph flower graph so that satisfy the hebe matsuda conjecture so mas and rinaldo proved that this uh, graph the binomial ideal of this graph admits two extremal petty numbers okay so then 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 we obtain this uh, example g which is a counter example to hebe matsuda conjecture so this graph actually admits two extremal petty number so and uh, by result of mas and rinaldo we obtain the regularity of g is 7 and we compute the h polynomial of this binomial ideal of this graph which is this so degree of h polynomial we can see that is 4 and regularity is not less than 5 so that means see, this conjecture fails if a uh, graph admits uh, 2x even even the case of 2x now one can extend this like one can extend this gap between degree of h polynomial and regularity in the following way so let g1 up to gk be k copies of uh, the the graph this graph and then we define this gk so we can see that this graph has a like lot of free vertices like except this vertex 1 2 and 3 all other vertices are free vertices so the graph gk is defined by identifying a free vertex of gi with a free vertex of gi plus 1 and so that is like the 
so by result of jayantan narayan and rao if g is uh, obtained in this way like g is union of g1 g2 where uh, the g like uh, this graph is obtained by identifying a free vertex of g1 with the free vertex of g2 in that case regularity of jg is regularity of jg1 plus regularity of uh, jg2 and minus 1 so by that result if you use this result k times then will so k minus 1 times we will get regularity of this graph gk is 6k plus 1 and uh, this is by a result of my, myself and uh, rajib sarkar we proved that if g is G1 union G2. In that case, this degree that H polynomial is product of H polynomial of binomial edge of G1 and H polynomial of uh, binomial edge of G2. So, using this recursively, we obtain that uh, degree of H polynomial of uh, this graph GK is 4K. So the difference between this is actually 2K. so this this is this can be made pretty large okay so this is so these are the reference and like uh, this this uh, the saidi madani conjecture for chordal graphs is also uh, proved by this uh, melleri saidi madani and kiani in this paper and also like this uh, saidi madani conjecture is actually now Uh, recently uh, this paper came on archive and in this paper uh, they have proved in, like it for uh, any graph okay uh, thank you yeah there is a question in the chat box yeah. how did you compute h polynomial of flower graph okay flower graph that is uh, basically flower graph has actually uh, one so that can be computed recursively like suppose uh, we'll do uh, induction on uh, number of internal vertices and uh, suppose uh, okay yeah so, so choose one internal vertex and then Uh, then uh, just do so we'll get a sort of the sequence that sort of consider that sort of the sequence and then hilbert series is additive uh, in the sort of the sequence so we will first obtain hilbert series and then from that uh, we, we can cons- we can obtain uh, that moment okay and then uh, then will be like after this gv will be like complete graph and then few whiskers are attached to a that complete graph and g without will be v will be like uh, few uh, edges and uh, few path graph on three vertices so for those graphs uh, the hilbert series are known and g v without v will be again uh, complete graph and few whiskers are attached and then uh, do this process again so in that way so basically the hilbert series of complete graph and path graphs and closed graphs are known so one has to use um, the hilbert series of those graphs yeah so uh, thank you arvin for the wonderful talk so if there are any questions yeah in that case let us unmute ourselves and thank arvin for this talk yeah thank you again arvin so thank you so much so okay so next week we'll meet on the same time and speaker for the next week is professor narayanan from iit madras yeah that is it for today see you all next week thank you for joining yeah thank you so much